بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته نرحب بكم الليلة في هذه الندوة التخصصية والتي ينظمها قسم الترجمة مع سلسلة من الفعاليات الأخرى للاحتفاء بيوم الترجمة العالمي الذي يوافق الثلاثين من سبتمبر لهذا العام آه نود أن ننوه بأن هنالك شهادات معتمدة لمن يحضر كامل اللقاء وكذلك سوف نقوم بالسحب على أربع قسائم شرائية للأثيم وريف للعطور في نهاية اللقاء بإذن الله آه ندوتنا تناقش أثر الكفاءة اللغوية والمرجعية الثقافية على جودة الترجمة وهي دراسة تطبيقية على عينة من طلاب الترجمة آه هذه الدراسة التي أمامكم تم تطبيقها من قبل محدثتكم أستاذة صفية عسيري ودكتور أمل متولي وتم نشرها بعنوان The Impact of Linguistic and Cultural Competence on Translation Quality Pedagogical Insights into Translation Problems It's good to know that this, is, this study is published, as I said, and now indexed in Scopus. Now I leave the floor to Dr. Amal to start with uh, an introduction and a background. Dr. Amal, would you please? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Um, I'd like to, to thank you so much for being here today. And I'd like to extend uh, a special thank you to our uh, uh, translation department. They're in the female section, Dr. Khairiya Al-Gahdani, and uh, the head of the translation department, uh, Dr. Aisa Asiri and uh, for organizing such um, a series of webinars and events uh, on our celebration of the day uh, of the uh, internet of the translation day so i would like to move to uh, our study here now yes so as you find here in the introduction of our study um, Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm just distracted with the, some of the uh, participation there. So, yeah, I just need to make sure that... Okay. Yeah, yeah, I, I mean that as um, uh, on the part of, uh, of our colleagues or our students who are joining, I think there's something in the setting, but it's okay. Okay. So here, according to the study that we have here today, uh, the most crucial component of translation education is the capacity to foster students' translation competence. And this is what, what we have highlighted here in this paper. The current study examines the educational implications of linguistic and cultural competence on the quality of translation in light of, of previous uh, studies and an effort to create self-directed, independent and skilled uh, translators. And that's what we try to do in this uh, study. When we go to the review of literature, we found that many studies have uh, emphasized the value of translation profes proficiency and how it contributes to the creation of high quality translations. For example, here in 2018, there was a study that looked at how culture and intercultural proficiency affect how will uh, students translate. Another study on, uh, in 2016, investigates uh, the connection between cultural intelligence and the translation of texts with a specific cultural context. And the results of this study's uh, pedagogical implications recommend, uh, in, including source language, community culture, and translation courses. So there was a debate between um, uh, translation contents and linguist, th this debate between translation contents and uh, linguistic contents as a pedagogical strategy is discussed also by uh, Papaskin 2011. 
where um, uh, in, this, uh, in this study the, uh, the effects of language acquisition on the growth of students' translation skills in English uh, linguistics uh, was studied and that was in 2013. Another study, as you find here, it was in 2018 and it explores the importance of lingual cultural proficiency for translators' success in the field uh, of cross-cultural um, business communication. So from this review study, along with other studies that we have here, it was found, uh, it's found actually that um, um, there is a, a great impact of linguistic and uh, cultural contents on the uh, quality and the production or the, the quality of the translation and how translation is produced uh, uh, properly. Uh, I'm going also to refer to another study that we have here. Uh, that, um, in which the types and reasons for the translation errors the English major students make are examined. And according to this study, according to, to the findings of the study, students' and anxiety and lack of confidence are the main factors contributing to translation errors. So that we have also reviewed some studies that um, uh, focus on uh, this psychological factor uh, that sometimes uh, could affect the proficiency or the production of uh, um, uh, proper translation. Another study in 2013, it looks into instances of translation problems when the cause was discovered to be a lack of linguistic or uh, cultural proficiency. It follows that there is a gap in the literature by discussing ways to improve the linguistic and cultural competency of translation uh, students in order to enable them to produce high quality translations. So we started from this gap, our journey started here, and um, we decided on uh, the um, the topic that we are going to discuss in our uh, paper here. Also, I'm going to review some uh, uh, parts here about translation, as uh, translation was defined as the act of rendering the meaning of a text into another language in the way that the author intended the text. It was uh, it's, it's uh, a well-known definition by Newmark in 1998. Uh, translation according uh, also to translation in the process of using linguistic studies and the culture of the target language to replace the meaning of the source language in the target language. In our review of literature also we want we, we uh, reviewed the strategies, the translation strategies, and it was clear that um, in the context of translation strategies, Baker in 2001 emphasized that the strategy is concerned with the options that translators actually select in real life. And uh, the classification provided by Newmark is one of the most well-known categories for translation strategies in the literature on translation uh, ideas, that of word-for-word uh, -word literal literal. Word-for-word uh, tra -word translation, lateral translation, faithful and semantic translations, they are the approaches utilized in the source language focused um, uh, strategies, according to Newmark, uh, who classified uh, translation methods into uh, target language oriented and source language oriented uh, classif categorizations or categories. Um, for the target language oriented techniques, we can have adaptation, uh, free translation, uh, idiomatic and communicative translations. So it was also very important to review these strategies uh, so that we can comment on our students' uh, practices or their uh, translations later on in the methodology. In linguistics, on the other hand, in linguistics, Chomsky characterizes competence as the use of 
uh, innate abilities to language acquisition. And according to Baker, a profession translator must be familiar with the semantics and uh, lexical conventions of the source language. So language proficiency is not enough for practical or educational purposes. We are, we are uh, interested not just in the fact that someone knows a language, but uh, that he knows or she knows how to use it. And this is very important in our discussion here of translation uh, quality. I'm going to move to the following uh, slide. And in terms of the potential to develop the translation contents, uh, a study in 2015 uh, divided the models into two broad categories, innate competence and um, in the competence where we have trans translation contents couldn't or need not to be uh, cultivated or taught, and translation contents which could be cultivated and learned, and hence demonstrating the importance and um, the necessity of translator education, or in other words, um, the practice of translation in, in, in order to acquire the, uh, the skill. Another translation competence model was offered, uh, um, actually it, it's uh, by Software in 1998. It, it, it proposes a list of rules for qualified uh, translators. And um, this was actually reviewed because it was also highlighted in the accommodation part of our study. And uh, these uh, include a deep understanding of both the source language and the target language. Um, a thorough at homeness, what we call at homeness, to feel at home in both cultures, um, being current with language developments and being uh, knowledgeable about all of its uh, uh, neologisms and um, uh, shades. Additionally, translators should be comfortable speaking and writing, uh, or to, to speak and write fluently, uh, to speak fluently and to, to be able to, to write, uh, translate, translate with good speed, and uh, to have the research ability to find the reliable uh, materials or sources they need to produce high quality translation. Another very important uh, quality of qualified translators, according to this study here, is their uh, familiarity, to be familiar uh, with technology, the technological uh, advances, which is also very important for professional uh, translators, especially with the, uh, when we refer here to the use of um, uh, the technology in translation and the use of cat tools and uh, the like. So we found here it's one, it's our find one of our findings here that linguistic contents uh, along with cultural contents they work together and in this way they are going to lead to translation contents so that they should be both uh, incorporated or they should be there both of them they should be there so that they are going to help the translator to produce a uh, good translation So if we discuss here the translation contents, uh, you will find from the above review of previous studies that um, translation contents cannot be attained um, or achieved unless a translator has solid linguistic and cultural understanding of both the source language and uh, the target language. And since translators, they need to be aware of these rules from the very beginning of their translation courses, so that students of translation should be introduced to them. Um, they should be, it should be one of the um, uh, objectives of a translation course from the very beginning and to be clear for the students that it's going to be one of the outcomes that they are going to um, improve their uh, proficiency in translation through um, such competence uh, or having a cultural or Im improving their linguistic and cultural contents. Because this is going to provide them uh, the knowledge they need to improve 
uh, uh, for their translation ask. So this means that we need to, to, to discuss culture in uh, uh, relation to translation. So uh, you find here that we have reviewed uh, the Scopus theory uh, for uh, developing our methodology. So the Scopus theory advanced uh, in 1984 by Rest and Vermeer places an emphasis on the uh, target uh, text uh, functionality in achieving its objective in the target language. It's comp uh, you know, the components are the Scopus rule, coherence rule, and loyalty rule are the three key rules in the Scopus theory according to the functional uh, methods to translation. If we have a look here and discuss uh, the, uh, the three rules, you'll find uh, uh, for our students, you know, that the word Scopus, it means purpose. So the Scopus rule is to translate in a way that enables the translation to work properly for the audience it will be used for. Um, the translator is the one who chooses which specific Scopus, which purpose should be carried out in the translation uh, process. As for the coherence rule, the translated text must make sense in the context. There should be uh, coherence. It should be coherent, so it sh there should be coherence there, and in this way the text will, will make sense in the context of the communication in, in which it's uh, used. The term reality rule describes the obligation a translator has to the source material, uh, so the intended audience and other participants uh, in the translation uh, process or other agents um, in this way, the translator will make sure that there is royalty uh, to uh, the text. Uh, so he has or she has uh, um, this obligation or this kind of uh, royalty uh, to the source material in uh, the process of uh, translation. Now we are going to move to our review of the errors in translation. As you found here, uh, we reviewed uh, the, uh, the meaning of, um, we started with defining translation, and then we moved to uh, the uh, purpose of translation, the scopus. Also we reviewed uh, uh, the, uh, the impact of the uh, linguistic and the cultural contents on the quality of translation. And also we need to review some studies that were focusing on the errors committed or the errors that were um, produced by uh, students in the process of translation. So as you find here, um, you'll find that there was a study, yeah, uh, Baker in 1998, According to uh, Baker, non-equivalence between the source language and the target language is the main cause of translation errors. This non-equivalence between the source language and the target language. And um, a categorization of errors was offered by uh, Norrish in 1983, where um, errors were categorized into three groups lexical errors, grammar errors, and basic errors, which are uh, about um, capitalization, the choice of words, punctuation, and spelling. So essentially, the lack of comprehension of the uh, source text uh, are, is, is one of the um, problems that are discussed here if we are discussing, if we are focusing on the errors in uh, translation. And in this respect, um, in 1998, there was a study that affirms that there are two categories of translation errors in this regard. They are categorized into binary and non-binary errors. Any error that, uh, that is viewed as incorrect translation or is going to result into incorrect, totally incorrect translation, it's binary error. On the other hand, 
if there is only imperfection, if the translation is described as being imperfect, but could be uh, improved, in this case, we call this a non-binary uh, error. So we found that although this classification of errors is useful for detecting the various errors made by translation students during the translation process, it doesn't completely cover all of the errors that are actually made during translation. There are other types of errors. They could be semantic errors, cultural errors, and stylistic ones. And you'll find many interesting uh, examples that will be reviewed by Ms. Sophia in her uh, part, where she is going to discuss the methodology and the example uh, uh, that students were asked to, uh, the, the text that students were asked to translate. So errors could be semantic, cultural, and stylistic as well. And this, uh, such kind of errors, they have a significant negative impact on the uh, translation, uh, on, the, on the quality of the translation. Here we go. Yes, here we have the methodology part. And um, you'll find that we are going to investigate uh, the uh, our students, uh, we are going to, to examine here some of our students' uh, translations to find uh, the importance of uh, the collocation, the, the um, uh, linguistic and the cultural uh, competence and knowledge in uh, producing a quality translation. Now I'm going to ask our uh, colleague, Ms. Sophia, to join us back to... Um, to discuss this part about the methodology with you. Thank you. Yes, and I thank you so much for such an informative theoretical uh, description. We really need that to understand and let's say uh, discuss and analyze the examples that we're going to have, inshallah, now. So I'll start with the methodology, which is uh, very important in any, uh, in conducting any paper. This research paper aims at studying the reason that led senior students of English department to commit mistakes in their translation. So this is very important. We are looking at reasons behind that and discussing how such reasons could be connected to linguistic and cultural competence and translation quality. So this is, is, this is the goal behind everything. The paper adopts a selective analytical qualitative method. The data was collected from the scripts of three timed assessments of 136 senior KKU students at level seven during uh, me teaching them their actual assessment sessions of translation two. Okay. Um, therefore, we ended up with 272 samples of midterm and final scripts plus 28 projects to study and analyze. Avoiding repetition as possible, samples that you will see, inshallah, chosen selectively as for the most recurrent ones, among others, and the unusual mistakes too. So to fulfill the methodology shown before, three timed assessments were given to the students and we can divide them into three categories, a midterm paper, a group project paper, and a final paper. So these are our data. The midterm paper is a kind of a formal assessment to be completed in one hour session individually, having access to paper dictionaries only. It was a literary text narrates a theft story to be translated into Arabic. And this is our text. Okay. It has some cultural specific elements. At the beginning, we have Christmas Eve. We have some sentences that uh, test the linguistic ability and competence of the students of using some vocabulary or let's say lexis, and we test how would they translate them in different contexts. So this is the source text, our Nasr al-Asli. 
the second assessment, ثاني assessment عندنا was a translation group project given to the same batch of students to be completed in a week time. هنا اللي يختلف التوقيت. Each group should comprise four to five students maximum, where they choose to be together. So it's not a random distribution from my own, from the instructor, or a forced one. This uh, has been done to ensure that each group of students are willing to work together and communicate to one another with no excuses for miscommunication matters. طبعاً أنا وصلت لهذه conclusion after um, how many years of conducting a project. كنا نعملها عشوائياً وكان في uh, miscommunication in the groups, uh, uh, dependency on some members other than the other. So, كانت هذه أفضل طريقة لي اللي هو عمل هذا الأسستان. Each group chose a leader, translators, and a proofreader. The project consists of three medium to long literary passages for different writers, and therefore written with different styles to be rendered into English. وللأسف يعني انعكست على البلاك بورد بهذا الشكل كان كان هنا اللي هو نص النص الأدبي لعبد الله المغلول بثلاث مقاطع مختلفة أخذوا الطالبات على شكل بروجكت لمدة أسبوع يبدو أن الفونت يعني ما تماشى يعني it's not compatible with the black board طلع لنا هذا الدروينج فاجأنا <تصفيق> Okay, the last type of assessment given was the final paper of the course to be completed in a two-hour session individually, having access to uh, paper dictionaries only. The text is an informative description of Doria season to be rendered into Arabic with some keywords translated at the bottom. Okay, وهذا كان نص الفاينل translation into Arabic. And our students are native speakers of Arabic, of course. Okay. طيب. مع أن الآن شفنا الثلاثة أنواع اللي كانت تعتبر test for our students. Now let's see the discussion and the results. The same batch of students, one 136 seniors, taking the three assessments during semester one, and uh, their scripts checked, marked, and analyzed. وطبعاً أخذنا الethical approvals and uh, Proceedings for all of that for sure. Uh, starting with the midterm paper, the students were given a feedback session after checking their scripts to discuss their good as well as poor choices of decisions, shedding light on the most repetitive and strange errors. هذا الشيء جدا مهم عندي حتى لو كان الكلاس يعني يعني compiled and full of students. نحتاج دائما فيدباك في سيشن خاصة لأن if, if the students uh, do not know their mistakes and do not see them checked how could they fix them up or just know where is the, the problem and try to fix it so I guess the feedback is an important stage in any teaching uh, in, in course in any classroom okay طيب بعد ما عملنا الفيدباك Okay, let me just check. شيكنا على poor and good choices. And then here, as you can see, three columns. The first one for the source text, the second for poor target text, and the last for acceptable, excellent version of target text. طبعا زي ما قلنا في البداية الجمل المختارة هنا هي الجمل اللي كان عليها recurrent and repetitive. Um, problems in the translation or good pieces of translation. فأكيد يعني ناقشنا فقط جمل من كل نص. عندنا الآن Christmas Eve had arrived. اخترنا يعني um, on purpose this text to have some cultural specific elements. زي هذا phrase اللي هو Christmas Eve. ترجم uh, كترجمة مقبولة أو ممتازة من من البعض يعني نحن شفنا عدد كبير 136 uh, ورقة. فالبعض ترجمها ك اقتربت عشية الميلاد لهذا اقتربت عشية الميلاد حلت عشية عيد الميلاد أتت عشية عيد رأس السنة جاءت عشية عيد الميلاد عشان كذا دائما نقول إن الترجمة ما فيها 
يعني ما نقدر نعمل لها answer key or something that everyone could follow because language is is very rich and people can play with the words the way um, as long as they get the meaning right مع قدوم عشية عيد الميلاد وصلت عشية العيد ها قد أتت عشية الميلاد عشية رأس السنة قد وصلت هنا عملتها كجلة اسمية إنها عشية عيد الميلاد هنا الجمل acceptable excellent version على الصعيد الآخر اللي هو in red the column in red includes poor target texts and poor pieces of translation عندنا هنا وصل عشية عيد الميلاد عيد الميلاد يعني جابتها صح والأغلب إحنا نعمل هذه على ال most repetitive choices ولكن وصل there is no agreement with عشية يفترض أن تكون وصلت وإحنا ما يعني يعني putting in mind that those students are native speakers of Arabic so they are playing in their comfort zone let's say okay so وصل عشية عيد الميلاد فيها مشكلة في ال agreement هنا كلمة غريبة يعني عملت اللي هي translation تقريبا بس الضمير ممكن نقول فطلعت لنا هذه الكلمة العجيبة Christmas Eve وصول عشية رأس السنة وصول يعني أجابتها كمصدر غادر شاسماز شايفين يعني إحنا نقول في أشياء unusual وفي بعض translations poor وبعضها peculiar كمان عند وصول Christmas عشية غادرت عشية الميلاد غادرة عاشة يعني هنا جدا عندنا اللي هي poor choices that sometimes couldn't be read and sometimes couldn't be understood and comprehended uh, of, of, for this sentence شوف الجملة الثانية uh, as last minute shoppers were going home a thick white sheet of snow laid over Lake City USA من أكثر الجمل اللي يعني تخلي الطالبات أو الطلاب يصير عندهم مشاكل في الترجمة جمل الكلوزز والبراعة لما الطالبة تربط الكلوزز ببعضها بطريقة أنها ما تكون بنفس الأوردر أو الـ الـ نفس الشكل في الإنجليش يعني تعطيها الطابع العربي الحبكة العربية خلينا نقول هنا ترجمت كـ اللي هي acceptable choices لبعض الطالبات تساقطت طبقة كثيفة من الثلج على مدينة ليك في الولايات المتحدة الأمريكية شايفين حطت هنا الانفيرتد كومات يعني كأنها تبغى تبين أن هذه اسم المدينة كتب برسم صوتي داخل النص العربي كترانسليتريشن هذا شيء جميل من الطالبة أو الطالبات اللي عملوا يعني جمل قريبة من بعضها البعض طبقة كثيفة من الثلج أوكي وايت شيت شيت هنا طبقة مدينة لاك كانت مغطاة بالثلج الأبيض هنا مغطاة اللي هي laid over كان الثلج يكسو مدينة لايك اللايك سيتي فهنا يكسو يغطي مغطاة طبقة كثيفة كلها أعطتنا اللي هي معنى شيت على الصعيد الآخر عندنا غطاء ثقيل من الثلج غطاء ثقيل ك يعني collocation it doesn't collocate in Arabic as غطاء ثقيل وتغطي نهر المدينة ورقة بيضاء شايفين هنا شيء ترجمت حرفيا إلى ورقة بيضاء حتى بحيرة المدينة ليك أعطي الترجمة هنا يعني translation not transliteration بالرغم من أنها capitalized in the text and italicized to show that it's علم Okay. بس كأن الطالبة ما تنبهت لهذا الأمر أو الطالبات المملكة المتحدة كان يمتد الثلج يمتد اللي هو laid over يمتد يعني ترجمة حرفية على بحيرة المدينة ورقة عريضة اللي هي white sheet sheet هنا برضو ورقة الكثافة البيضاء للشراشف اللي sheets برضو أعطوها شراشف هنا كلها تراجم حرفية got out of its context شايفين هنا كاللحاف نزلت صفيحة نحيلة أنا بالعادة إذا شفت كذا peculiar and unusual translations أحاول أرجع وأشوف ليش الطالبة وصلت إلى هذا المعنى يا إنها تكون ترجمة حرفية أو قرأت الكلمة بشكل خاطئ يعني يكون أحد هذا الأمرين من باب يعني discourse analysis Okay, so let's move on 
the lights were still burning in the old clock shop, still burning. So, الإنارة لا زالت مضاءة. هنا الجملة acceptable يعني لو قلنا لا زالت الإنارة مضاءة تكون فيها الحبكة العربية أقوى. المصابيح لا زالت مضاءة. الأضواء لا زالت منارة. ما زالت الأضواء مشعلة أو مشعلة. So هنا تعتبر acceptable and some excellent versions. على ال 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 الكولم الآخر ما زالت تضيء وهو يحرق وهو يحرق سوق الساعة القديم. هنا يحرق burning literal translation. هنا محل غطاء الحذاء القديم ما توصلت نهائيا ليش استخدموا طالبات هنا البعض منهم الحذاء ما اعرف يمكن شوب شافوها كشو مثلا I don't know كانت الاضواء محترقه برضو literal translation الاضواء لا زالت تحترق still burning جميعها محترقه so هذه poor translation okay. طبعا احنا نعرض هذه الجمل اكيد لباب ال وغرض التحليل والمعرفة وتجنب الأخطاء و not for any other type of 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 reason. As way, it's old deaf owner still working on a clock. كانت تعتبر كclothes. Way هنا اسم علم وcapitalized and within with the list of of adjectives still working on a clock. المالك الأصم ما زال يعمل على ساعة. برضو هنا ما فيها الحبكة زي ما قلنا ممكن نقول ما زال المالك الأصم للمحل يعمل على ساعة ولكن تعتبر مكسبتبو لا زال يعمل على إصلاح الساعة ما زال يعمل في المتجر هنا ممتازة الترجمة سيمانتيكلي يعني أعطت المعنى سيمانتيكلي كابور تشويسز لا زال يعمل على الساعات هنا بس عشان الجمع والتعريف شيء نكرة كالشعاع هنا ترجمة حرفية لري as شعاع آه لا زال يعمل في الساعة آه يعمل في هذه الساعة هنا غلط آه سيمانتيكلي كان كما كان ري العجوز الأصم لا زال يعمل على مدار الساعة يعني هي إجابة الفارس الأول صحيح بس على مدار الساعة آه لا هنا عندنا مشكلة آه في المعنى والترجمة دائما تنقل المعنى ودائما غلط المعنى لما صحح الستودنت يعني يسحب درجات أكثر من اللي هي ال 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 خلينا نقول زي ما قال الدكتور أمل ال إن binary mistakes اللي هي for grammar and capitalization and other okay the younger man remained at the door ترجمة جيدة لها الرجل الشاب بقي عند الباب نلاحظ إن الطالبات يمسكون نفس الأوردر في العربي من غير ما تعطي الحبكة العربية المطلوبة يعني ممكن إنه شوية نخلي الجملة sounds more Arabic الرجل الشاب بقي عند الباب الرجل الأصغر واقفا عند الباب الرجل الأصغر سنا بقي على عتبة الباب هنا ممتازة كبور uh, choices رجل شاب يتذكره يعني كأنها شافت remains reminds تقريبا يبقى الرجل الأصغر عند الباب يبقى Uh, no, the sense is not correct. الرجل المتبقي كان في الباب بقي الرجل الجائع عند الباب هنا الجائع أعتقد أنها شافت younger, younger, something like. That. Let's move on with our example. So here, the older man approached the counter with no sign of friendliness in his eyes. كان الرجل الأكبر قريبا من ركن المحاسبة وفي عينه الكثير من البغض هنا ترجمت by opposite يعني ما ترجمت ترجمت بالعكس وترجمة صحيحة وممتازة مثلا اللي بعدها لنفس جملة مع عدم وجود أي علامة للطف في عينيه هذه ترجمة مطابقة تماما لفريندلينس اللطف اللي فوق غيرت ترجمت بالضد كان الرجل الأكبر قريبا من ركن المحاسبة وفي عينيه الكثير من البغض اللي هو ضد عدم وجود أي علامة للطف في عينيه وهي خيارات جيدة. اقترب إلى منضدة البائع بلا أي تعبير يوحي إلى الراحة في عينيه ممتازة وكصيغة أدبية يعني لو كانت بترجم نوفل أو تعطي صيغ جميلة هنا هذه الخيارات هذه كخيارات غير مقبولة أو ضعيفة 
مع وجود علامة لطف في عينيه يعني هنا أعطى في المعنى خطأ تماما نقلته خاطئ مع عيناه التي لا يجد فيها علامة الصداقة برضو المعنى هنا في ركالته يأتي ويقبض على موضع الحساب يقبض على موضع الحساب It doesn't sound Arabic بدون نظرة حنونة في عينيه Also this is not sounding uh, Arabic مع الإشارة بعينيه لصديقه الأصغر هنا semantically mistaken لا يوجد علامة لأصحابه في العين أكثر من جهاز المحافظ طبعا هذه choices كتبتها أكثر من طالبة من بين هذول ال 136 scripts يعني كانت متكررة recurrent and unusual translation وهذا حقيقة interesting يعني يكون يعني يعني من ميزات الدراسات اللي تكون لارج سكيل ان تقدر تشوف فيها اشياء ريكارنت ويكون يعني في دراسه على هذه الحاله. ري تيرند تو ميت ذا شوبر التفت ري لمقابله المتسوق ذهب ري لمقابله المتسوق هذه اكسبتبل التفت افضل منها اكيد. التف ري لمقابله المشتري ممتازه استدار ري كلها ممتازة choices for turn انعطف ري لمقابلة المتسوق انعطف collocates more with a car um, with something uh, non-human I guess so انعطف ري not doesn't collocate uh, together هي فهمت الفكرة ولكن ما لقيت اللكسس المناسبة um, ري عاد لمقابلة البائع كأنها شافت تيرن ريتيرن ري يدير لمقابلة المتسوقين يدير ما عرفت أوصل كيف طلعت يدير I don't have a clue ري يتلصص لمقابلة البائع يتلصص برضو يعني يعني هي ترجمت بالمعنى ولكن معنى خاطئ ري يدير اجتماع ري يدور حول المتسوقين So we have problems in these choices. Oh yes. في جملة Have you come to pick up a clock or a watch? هل جئت لاقتناع لاقتناع ساعة حائط أو ساعة يد؟ هل جئت لاختيار لاقتناع أفضل طبعاً؟ هل جئت لتأخذ؟ هل جئت لتشتري؟ كل هذه choices تمتد من المقبول إلى ال excellent choices. Kapoor translations. هل أتى وأخذ الساعة؟ يعني هنا المعنى جدا في أشياء مفقودة كثيرة missing. هل تريد تحديد الساعة؟ هل جئت لأخذ الغطاء أو الساعة؟ ما أعرف ليش الغطاء؟ ليش جابت الغطاء؟ I don't know. هل تأتي لتحسن الساعة أو الساعات؟ Also these are not acceptable. The old man left saying Merry Christmas. عيد ميلاد مجيد، عيد ميلاد سعيد، عيد مجيد، عيد رأس سنة سعيد، هذه التشويسز المعروفة لهذه الجملة. بينما ماري uh, كريسماس ممكن تكتب كترانسليتريشن ولكن لها لها ترجمة موجودة ومستخدمة. Uh, بس ممكن نشوفها كذا على الأقل في الموفيز أو في اللي يعني when there is no translation provided. الرجل المسن قال لليسار إن ترجمة لف كيسار عيد ميلاد ماري هذه كانت صادمة عيد ميلاد ماري زي ما قلت لكم هذه ريكارن تكررت في كذا ورقة آه يعني عيد ميلاد ماري أو ماري آه how come for, for such a, a common phrase like ميري كريسمس يعني على الأقل في الموفيز أو رح نشوف بعد كذا الدسكشن Uh, the message of peace on earth, goodwill towards all, was felt by the three men who stood in the old clock shop. حسن النية تجاه الجميع شعر من خلال ثلاثة رجال uh, السلام على الأرض وحسن النية للجميع كانت الرسالة محسوسة. Uh, يعني عندنا هنا good pieces of translations لأن هذه الجملة تحتاج يعني صياغة خلينا نقول في العربي. على الصعيد الآخر السلام في الأرض شعر بواسطة جميع الرجال الثلاثة ممكن تكون الجملة صحيحة ولكن ركيكة ركيكة تحتاج صياغة المشاعر جيدة نحو الكل من قبل ثلاثة رجال doesn't sound Arabic سقطت من الرجال الثلاثة الأبتوكة الأبتوكة ما أعرف what is it مفين جابت على الأبتوكة في الطباي وهو سبت I couldn't know how this 
ورجعنا نشوف الحذاء زي ما قلت لكم اكرم الله الجميع تجاهكم جميعا so these are the choices for the midterm paper طيب the main reason leading to the poor choices the students talked about in the feedback لما انا ناقشت في الفيدباك كنا نضحك على بعض الاشياء وبعضها يعني نتساءل ويضحكون على خياراتهم they said it's time constraints and it and examination and anxiety يعني هم قالوا لي واجمعوا على هذه التو ريزنز يعني ان ضيق الوقت وتوتر الاختبار اللي دفعهم لهذه الخيارات بزعمهم يعني هم يشوفون كذا so they believed that if they would be given extra time or they were a bit relaxed they may produce better pieces of target text هذا احنا مشينا معهم للاخر زي ما يقولون بنشوف بعد شوي so certainly Time is a big factor in any translation task. وكم ترجمين نعرف هذا الأمر. Simple or complicated, we can see the blinds in big translation companies working with professional translators. Time frame and time factor is very important. In the field of translation, time is a factor. This leads to one end that time is really a significant aspect affecting professional translators before novice ones. In our case, the students of translation. Nevertheless, ومع ذلك, 25% of the students who produced excellent target text or, or, or target um, choices were taking the test in the same atmosphere as others do. وممكن تقول إن عندهم الملكة اللغوية يعني ما شاء الله أو الثقافية كمان أكيد إن يعني هم في نفس الاتموسفير ولكن الربع بالضبط من كل الparticipants أظهروا خيارات جيدة للترجمة أو خيارات ممتازة حتى في نفس الوقت في نفس الاتموسفير ونفس اللي هو التايم الاكزامينيشن أنا اكزايتي لسي So it's good to acknowledge that throughout the semester the students were put under three types of training and how to manage their timing while having a translation task in hand. أتذكر إني كنت أدربهم بالساعة يعني نبدأ بالstop watch كنا شغالين على stop watch عشان نشوف كم كم يحتاج الوقت لترجمة الجملة ومشينا لين وصلنا paragraph وبعدين إلى essay أكبر لأن كان مشكلة بالنسبة للبعض إنه تعطيهم الباسج تعطيهم time frame مثلا ربع ساعة خلص الربع ساعة ما في إلا جملة مترجمة فبدينا نشوف sentence by sentence وأخذنا هذا التدريب throughout uh, the semester طيب nonetheless the big question is can time constraints really push students to produce poor unusual mistakes such as the ones shown in table 1 يعني فعلا ضغط الوقت بيخليني أكتب هذه choices Is it really time limitations that make a student to translate Merry Christmas, which is a very well-known cultural phrase, into Eid Milad Mary, or Merry Christmas, or the أشياء الأكثر اللي شفناها أصعب يعني زي ال ال translation اللي كتبت قبل فهل يعقل إن بسبب ضغط الوقت كتبتها كذا Is it timing or cultural incompetence, or عدم الكفاءة الثقافية? يعني هي أول مرة تسمع هذا ال ال phrase مثلاً for cultural negligence خلونا نقول مع إنه شهير أو أول مرة تصادفه مثلاً في نص. So when a student used ورقة عريضة من الثلج هل هل الثلج ممكن يكون منه ورقة or كثافة بيضاء للشراسة as translations to a thick white sheet of snow laid over Lake Sevier USA. Is it because of timing or linguistic incompetence? And هذه ما فيها أي شيء ثقافي هي تعتبر زمل عادية. فا is it linguistic incompetence? يعني هل عنده مثلاً ضعف في ال 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 الإجادة اللغوية أو هل هو فعلاً بسبب الوقت؟ إنتوا إيش تشوفون? What is more logical? مع إن الشات مقفولة ولكن I guess it's clear that the logic it it it's not the the Timing frame is the linguistic incompetence. 
انقفلت يعني الشات فور نو ريزن اتذكر حطيت الخيار ولكن ما اعرف ايش حطيت Another example is Christmas Eve had arrived. It was translated by most students as وعندنا خيارات يعني زي ما شفنا غريبة خلينا نقول. Students gave even more unusual target text for the sentence than the previous one, which demonstrates a clear misunderstanding of culture. ما لها حل آخر. As for the rest of the examples shown in the table above, They tend to demonstrate unforgivable examples of linguistic incompetence, which occurred repeatedly in the student's scripts, such as rendering remained as متبقي أو يتذكر uh, turned into انعطفة and burning as محترق. Okay. So now going to the second time assessment. يعني هم قالوا المرة الأولى كان عندهم مشكلة في اللغة. واتفقنا انها logically it's insane that we uh, accuse time for such uh, mistakes. Now, going to the second time assessment, students were not introduced to frank culture phrases in this paper, but they were given some sentences with highly formal register to test their linguistic competence. مثلا جمل يتناقله الركبان تسد جوعه وتقيم أوده بل ورثها مصور مطارد يعني نص أدبي وأدبي بحث وأكيد راح يكون في rhetorics and sentences with high formal register طيب they were given more time واتفقت معاهم إن معاهم أسبوع a week and access to different resources صار عندهم online dictionaries with their computers everything and they are in groups The group's members were working willingly together. هم مختارين بعضهم البعض. And that assumes to boost the quality of the work. Okay, يا ليت كان النص واضح عندنا. هو كان يعني مقتطفات من كتابات أدبية للكاتب عبد الله المغلي. من الوهلة الأولى من نظرتكم للشارت للتيبل راح يوضح إن فيه تطور حقيقي يعني. ما صار عندنا poor target text بالعكس يعني في فئة كبيرة ترجمت بشكل جميل جدا أدبي لجملة ظل فترة طويلة يبحث عن وظيفة تسد جوعة وتقيم أوده بلا نتيجة يخفف من حدة آلامه النفسية الجملة الأولى مثلا تسد جوعة وتقيم أوده he was looking for a job that would fill his hunger and get him back on his feet To fill his hunger and support his life, to fill his hunger and help him, uh, he kept for a long time looking for a job to make a living uh, without a result. هذه ممتازة sounds English. فعندي خيارات جميلة تبدأ من the acceptable وتطلع إلى the excellent. جملة يخفف من حدة آلامه النفسية. To ease his psychological pain, to relieve. to alleviate, to intensify, to uh, emotional distress, to reduce, to diminish, to decrease, which are good examples and excellent, let's say, examples for choices for يخفف من. قرر أن يبدأ خطوة جديدة تركز على أن التقاط الصور للبشر وليس للحجر. يعني غير رأيه من تصوير الناس إلى تصوير مثلا المناظر الطبيعية أو مجازيا استخدمنا وليس للحجر البعض يعني بعدد لا بأس به ترجمها كحرفيا ك based on photographing people not rocks والمجموعة الأخرى ترجموها semantically as capturing pictures for humans not for the inanimate taking pictures for humans not non living objects or humans uh, of humans not non humans and so on and so forth Okay. Uh, راقت له الفكرة ولا سيما بعد أن انطلق في بلورتها إلى و... بلورتها يعني تفعيلها تطبيقها خلونا نقول زي كذا المعنى المختار الحون So this idea impressed him a lot especially after he turned its essence into reality after he set out to practice it uh, he started to convert it into reality 
after he applied it into reality, turned it into a real. فكلها خيارات ممتازة. هنا استخدموا crystallize وتكررت تكررت يعني في هذا He liked the idea, especially after he started to crystallize it into reality. شوية فيها خلينا نقول it's not sounding it's not sound um, English. Okay, كأنها جملة شوية فيها فيها some technical problem. Um, التقط صورا للعابرين في نيويورك uh, كبور تشويس نيويورك باسنجرز uh, عندنا خيارات أفضل uh, He took pictures of the passers by uh, capturing pictures for random people uh, took photos for the New Yorkers ممتازة هذه التشويس of New Yorkers uh, best trains people working there for the transit transient So some of these choices are ranging from acceptable to excellent. أصبحت مشروعا مشوقا يتناقله الركبان. So became an interesting project. Okay, uh, that was shared among people. جدا ممتازة. خلونا نشوف البور عشان نعرف دي مثل ال 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 good choices. Exciting project uh, between passengers uh, commuting stirrups. Carried by stirrups. Um, became an interesting project that was shared among people, an interesting project narrated by people everywhere. Uh, by paraphrase. Most people uh, have been, or oh, by explanation, most people have been uh, talking about, sprayed among people, that everyone was talking about. Um, that out sprays among people, exchanged, uh, uh, popular, became popular project, became a, a word of, of a mouth, of mouth, word of, of mouth, famous sprayed among all. Again, فحزم براندون عفشه وصوره إلى موقع تمبلر. يعني أكيد ما في عفش فيزيكلي ولكن هو انتقل هذا الموقع غير يعني من هذه البلاتفورم وراح للثانية. So Brandon picked up his furniture and photos to take them to Tumblr. He packed his baggage and pictures. هذه الأسوأ. He backing حتى um, his packs for blogging. Uh, هنا حط في اسم التطبيق. Uh, packed his uh, throne. Okay, you can show it as a for example, as a So I don't know. كخيارات صحيحة. Brandon gathered his ideas and pictures to Tumblr. He collected all his his tools and photos to Tumblr uh, blogging site. He packed his stuff and images. شايفين على قل قال stuff. He moved his stuff. And pictures to Tumblr. He packed his pictures. He started his project on the blogging website Tumblr. Brandon created a blog on Tumblr. Okay, so we have different uh, choices. تحول من موظف مطرود إلى مصور مطارد. نبغى نمشي بس بسرعة شوية. So to a stalker photographer into a wanted photographer. Uh, hunting them. He turned from a fired employee to a desirable photographer, to a famous photographer, to a popular photographer, a uh, paparazzo, a striving photographer, chased, uh, required, let's say. So these are better choices, of course, than hunting or stalker photographer. Okay. كأنها قرتها مطارد. وليس مطارد. أصر الموظف الكريم على موقفه. He insisted them. Uh, insisted about his reaction, about his kindness and behavior. ممكن تكون معقولة. Uh, الأفضل منها. The generous clerk insisted on his offer. Uh, the employee dug in his heels. هنا ممتازة لأنها جابت صيغة rhetorical والنص أدبي. Insisted. Um, insisted on his porch. 
right? طيب أقبل على الحياة بلا توقعات حالمة. He came to life without any dreaming expectations. الأفضل منها يعني ك imperative أقبل في الأمر move forward to life without dreaming expectations. Accept life without dreaming expectations. Move towards life. Come to life. Live life. Proceed in life. Taste life and approach life. لا تخذ حروبا ضارية مع نفسك ولا تقضي حياتك في خصومات جدا واضحة جدا straight for hand um, forward الخصومات هنا ترجمة كا discount uh, هنا كا opponents بس يعني خصوم يمكن بس discounts unforgivable uh, choice صراحة خاصة ان الجملة جدا واضحة uh, denotatively يعني ما فيها اي أي حبكة مثلا صعبة. Don't go through fierce wars with yourself. Spend your life in arguments. هنا الخصومات arguments, opponents, um, rivalries, قريبة شوية, disputes, quarrels, antagonisms. فمرة formal, fights, conflicts ممكن تكون الأفضل هنا خلينا نقول. choices. So the target text. Okay, uh, we're in general much better than ter midterm scripts. Akid, in terms of grammar, structure, translation decisions, and the number of poor choices. Two sentences which were translated perfectly in most of the projects, with assorted vocabulary and rhetorical phrases sometimes. Some lexical mistakes have been noticed repeatedly. Especially in regard to the examples of high registered mentions, in the first example that we saw, that was expected to some degree, yet some recurrent mistakes still be noticed in even average simple sentences. This is a sentence of grammar. It is a sentence that is clear, but it has recurrent mistakes as um, uh, discounts, where the students should only get the context well and look up the words in the dictionary. Also, some very odd choices were given such uh, as rendering khusumat into discounts, furniture, مصور مطارد, uh, into a hunting photographer, العابرين into passengers, through the time needed was given, the anxiety factor was eliminated, and different resources were there for the students besides two tutorial sessions before submission. two tutorial sessions before submission. We believe that linguistic competence or الكفاءل الجدار اللغوية is something learned. Accumulatively, يعني يبنى مع الطالب أو الطالبة من أول ما يبدأ يتعلم اللغة. Since the early stages of studying English or acquiring Arabic, uh, the students in question are merely native Arabic speakers. Uh, so حتى في ال ال الجهة العربية كان عندنا مشكلة. Therefore, if the students showed some linguistic incompetence, that would definitely be the case with other courses. Uh, they take such as writing courses and not only for translation. Aslan, writing with translation Am I still be heard? Okay. The third uh, assessment, the third assessment, is the uh, given was a final paper which demonstrates a well-known cultural dis uh, district to any Saudi citizen in Hiya Diria. The text talk about the historical position uh, of the place and the will advertised Diria season. Maybe, uh, I guess, it's three, two to three years ago, can a Muslim Diria, يعني مال المكان والإعلانات everywhere وأخذنا النص يعني على هذا الشيء 
اوكي نفس ما هو موجود عندنا اعتقد تعرضنا سابقا سو من ابرز الجمل فيه الجمله المذكور فيها الدرعيه طبعا كانت مكتوبه as capitalized and italicized فمعناته ان الكلمه هذه اكيد ما راح تكون الا علم So Jaria is the historical site of the establishment of the first Saudi state. Uh, acceptable, which I think is Galila, <laughs> inacceptable. So Adiria, هي معلم تاريخي تأسست في الدولة السعودية الأولى. شكرا لكل أحد قال الدولة السعودية الأولى. كان في ناس قالوا الولاية. Um, نشوف. الدرعية هي مكان تاريخي، الدرعية هي مكان تاريخي مدى تأسست في الدولة السعودية السعودية الأولى، الدرعية هي الموقع التاريخي لإمارة الدولة السعودية الأولى. نشوف كـ other choices not acceptable، تأسست في بداية المملكة العربية السعودية، شايفين هنا ترجموا by omission، ما عرفوا إيش هي حدثوها. آه، تم تأسيسها في أول ذكرى السعودية، الدرعية أنشئت. أول مجموعة تاريخية لها تصريح سعودي، تصريح سعودي. أول مجموعة تاريخية يعتبر ديريح موقع تاريخي في السلطة الحاكمة يعني هنا عملت له ترانسليتريشن يعني على ما يعني ما فهمت منه تم تأسيسه في السعودية من التأسيس هي أول حالة سعودية نشأت نشأت هنا مع اللي هي of establishment نشأت أوكي يعني اكتشفت شايفين في مشاكل فيها مع أنه into Arabic درعة في ناس قالوا تحت في ناس قالوا الحريضة و so just for time we have to move on okay. عندنا considered the jewel of the kingdom يعني هي جوهرة في المملكة وقلبها وروحها خلونا نقول الأغلب ترجمها كذا on the other hand كان عندنا يراعى جوهر المملكة يتم التفكير بأنها قطعة مجوهرات فكرة جوهرية للمملكة يعد جويل تحتوي جول جويل كان فيها هذه الفلسفة. It's cool mud brick buildings اللي هي المباني الطينية وهي مبنية من طوب طين بارد مبانيها الطينية مبنية من الطوب كـ inacceptable كانت بناية عادية مباني منهكة ليش منهكة ما أعرف مباني قديمة أوكي مباني شاهقة محطمة بنايتها هادئة رائعة من الطين المكسر شوفوا هنا مبنى مود بريك يعني عملتها كترانسليتريشن طيب on the banks of the wadi حنيفة on the banks أكيد راح تترجم للبنوك إذا إحنا بنناقش البور ترانسليشن في ناس لا بعد أعطوها عربيزيشن وصارت مصرف بحيرة اللي هو وادي قالوا يعني بحيرة طيب جوانب حني بني حنيفة هي جابت جوانب بس بني حنيفة لا على ركام وادي حنيفة في قاع وادي حنيفة كثيرة طيبة تأسست في ضفة وادي حنيفة لو قالوا ضفاف أفضل أحس ضفة ترتبط أكثر ب في كليشيز عندنا في العربي لضفة مطلة على وادي حنيفة ممتاز على ضفة وادي حنيفة سو so, هذه أحد الخيارات happening at a UNESCO heritage site درية ويحدث يونسكو في تراث موسم الدرعية تراث اليونسكو تحصل في يونسكو يعني تراث اليونسكو ممكن تكون بس ما كملت الجملة ما صغتها صح كما في محطة يونسكو آه يعني في أشياء غير منطقية صراحة Logical choices. وضع في منظمة اليونسكو التي تحدث في القسم التاريخي لمنظمة التربية العلوم الثقافة التابعة للمتحدة وقع هنا الأفعال فيها مشكلة برضو مسجلة ممتاز في تراث منظمة اليونسكو مسجلة وليست وضع ولا يقع ولا غيرها من الأفعال. A giant open air family entertainment district for all ages. فعاليات خاصة بالعائلات بكل الأعمار، منطقة عائلية ترفيهية كبيرة، ممكن لوجات مفتوحة، في الهواء الطلق، خيارات ممتازة، هو بناء معماري مفتوح لكل الأعمار، مخصصة غير للعوائل، هنا بعضها فيها مشاكل بسيطة والبعض لا أكثر، سوف يكون هناك حي لتسلية العائلة، البوابة مفتوحة، عائلة كبيرة جدا، يعني ما في comprehension أكيد للكونتكست. 
affluent resources of Saudi Arabia and the region. غني بالموارد في الموضع في المملكة. شكرا للي كتبوا غني بالموارد. يعني في ناس قالوا مصادر. موارد أفضل. المصادر الغنية الموارد أفضل بكل المقاييس. مصادر غنية مصدره السعودية مرجع غني شايفين هنا resources حطتها ترجمة حرفية بحثة مرجع مصدر تعتبر في النص بينما مورد هو المقصود هنا اوكي هنا اللي هي ال conclusion um, alright so at the time period of the test the diarrhea season was launched and therefore visited by many renowned people and got good coverage on TV and by most social media influencers in Saudi Arabia at that time. We found it a good idea to give such a topic to the students so they would be definitely familiar with. The text has been rendered in a smart way by some students whom we think are strong linguistically and therefore culturally, أكيد, as you can see in Table 3. strong linguistically and culturally. They comprise about 40% of the whole samples. يعني الحمد لله كانوا فعلا 40% من النسبة الكاملة. Those students show high level of linguistic and cultural competence. Their sentences follow smooth, flow smoothly. Uh, the meaning is clear. The text is in general is coherent. مرة يهمني الكوهيرنس. يعني تكون الجملة صح الكلمات اللي فيها وال ال equivalences وال lexes. بس مفككة ك order أو ك agreement أو يعني ما فيها coherence. جدا مهم انا اشوفها من اهم الـ الـ العلامات او الساينز على linguistic uh, ability and competence. They can get use of the context to provide closer meanings for what the text uh, they work on. Surprisingly, on the other hand, diarrhea has been rendered as a diarrhea, al hreza, bahriya, diarrhea, dir'a, da'ira, diarrhea in some of the scripts uh, refer to the table. Such poor choices for the well-known cultural and historical place shows uh, the effect of cultural negligence, يعني جهل ثقافي and incompetence وعدم كفاءة ثقافية on the target texts of the students. No offense. Can uh, analysis uh, The poor versions of translations given to this sentence. Uh, foster the notion of the importance of cultural competence to produce translation quality as an output. لازم يكون في ثقافة في معرفة ثقافية. Unlike linguistic incompetence, cultural incompetence is not forgivable and cannot be um, excused or tolerated. That's it. يعني الغلط الثقافي مرة فادح. أقوى من الغلط اللي هو اللغوي أو الخطأ اللغوي. Okay. طيب. Another example of cultural incompetence. كمان شيء ثاني يعطينا عدم ال ال الجودة أو الكفاءة الثقافية. Produced in the second part of the first example, اللي هو the first Saudi state. في ناس قالوا أول ولاية سعودية، أول طبقة سعودية، أول تصريح سعودي. تصريح طبقة ولاية تعتبر غير مقبولة. This phrase is widely mentioned in school's curricula. إذا تذكرون مناهج المدرسة يمكن الصف السادس نبدأ نسمع عن الدولة السعودية الأولى والثانية في التاريخ يعني مو جديد الدولة السعودية الأولى وليست ولاية ولا طبقة ولا تصريح yet still be translated as quite inacceptable version as shown. Some sentences undergone lexical and linguistic mistakes أخطاء لغوية مثل اللي هو mud brick buildings اللي ترجمت إلى شاهقة محطمة منهكة ولها يعني الاكسبلانيشن تبعها example 2 uh, and 4 are also huge demonstration of linguistic incompetence اللي هو جويل لما قالوا تحتوي على جول جويل uh, the students focused on the denotative meaning يعني على الشكل الظاهري للكلمة and ignored the context والكونتكست جدا مهم 
and the word the banks rendered ila rukam buhaira masrif bunuk such mistakes affect the quality of the translation desperately so as a conclusion to sum up we can say that linguistic and cultural incompetence is a state of having some problems in what in comprehending a text in its context which affects the quality of the, of the target text negatively incompetent students culturally or linguistically tend to provide peculiar translations that can be disastrous sometimes واحنا قلنا ان الكلتشر اعم من اللغه اللغه جزء من الثقافه بينما الثقافه هي امبريلا للغه فالخطا الثقافي اعم واشمل من الخطا اللغوي وافدح خلينا نقول as a matter of fact in most of the scripts checked if the students may recurrent شايفين خطا متكرر recurrent linguistic mistakes in grammar or structure or word choice they tend to produce mistakes also in the cultural segment of the text. يعني بتسوي خطأ لغوي أعتقد وأتوقع منها أنها رح تسوي خطأ ثقافي. Okay. هذا اللي شفناه يعني هذه empirical study اللي إحنا عملناها. In other words, we are researchers believe as researchers believe that culture is beyond language, as any language can be a part of a culture, and in what we have seen, the students who produced linguistic mistakes failed also in rendering the cultural parts correctly and it was impossible for most of them to understand the cultural aspects of some of the sentences. Lish, because simply they couldn't get the easier linguistic parts correctly. يعني بالعكس أترجم شيء linguistically أسهل من لما أترجم culturally والعكس صحيح. Okay. Pedagogical insights اللي زي ما قلنا في العنوان أكيد رح نطلع بأشياء تخدم اللي هم instructors in the classroom. It's worth saying that yes, classroom is not the only place to master translating, but it's the first break or stage most of the time translators start with. What we want to say here is that the classroom uh, can be a more productive place if we become able to functionalize it. Uh, well, institutions, okay, of English and translation should put cre clear criteria for admitting the students to their program. خاصة زي لما فتحنا الآن قسم الترجمة المفترض الأدمشن يكون غير. Language and translation require having good knowledge of English and culture in the first place. أكيد ما رح أطلب منهم ك freshmen إن يكونوا خبراء أو very fluent. Uh, لا ولكن لازم يكون في بيس لازم يدخل بيس معين يحددها يحددها القسم كمعيار then when students enrolled in the program they can build on the good base they have institutions shouldn't tolerate this as it's the first break in the whole learning process uh, by the time those linguistically good students reached level 6, 7 and 8 هذول اللي احنا already أسسناهم من البداية صح uh, they are expected to study translation courses. They can manage translating different genres more than others and with low levels of competence. More than others with low levels of competence. They are privileged. They can presumably get more of their instructors and have the tendency to read uh, and practice more. Yeah, the tendency على اللي هم الانستركتورز انتوز انهم احيانا ممكن يحبطون من كمية ال يعني الانستركشنز اللي تعطى وتعطى في غير محلها يعني يكون اصلا الطالب ما ما في حصيلة لغوية فحرام انه يكون يدخل على الترجمة ترجمة should be something advanced آه تجي بعد السكيلز كلهم الاساسية للستودنت آه مهارة عليا نعتبر فممكن يحبطون التيتشرز ممكن انه يظلم الطالب الممتاز او اللي عنده ما شاء الله الملكه او المهاره اللغويه او الثقافيه لانه قاعد ياخذ لو ليفل اوف انستركشن على اساس تو سوت ذا اذرز انا شفت رساله هنا جت على 
على الشاطئ طيب uh, what is even uh, better is those students have to choose their path uh, الحمد لله صار عندنا الان اللي هو translation department um, واضح من البدايه for anyone who wants to uh, choose from the beginning uh, as instructors of translation our aim is to teach a reasonable number of students in which we can check their progress gradually and give personal tutorials more often انا اعتقد ان لو كان العدد اقل ممكن انه يكون في فوكس دايركت توتوريالز اون ذا ستودنتس سو ذات ذي ويل بينيفيت مور بس اكيد ان في معايير يعني تفرض على الاقسام والكليات مجتمعيا و يعني يحتاجون انه يرفعون الاعداد الى يعني رينج معين We need to spot the translation problems for all of them individually right from the beginning so that they can work on them and fix the gap. With packed classes of students, it becomes impossible to achieve such a goal. Okay. Good and fair admission criteria, reasonable class size, passionate students of translation are three crucial factors uh, that can elevate the quality of teaching and the outputs of translation programs and their alumni. Uh, thank you so much for um, uh, just hearing all of that. And back to Dr. Amal for recommendations. Thank you, Mr. Faye. Thank you so much for this insightful um, uh, uh, and wonderful analysis of our students' uh, translations and your elaboration on the findings of the study. That was really interesting. Now I'm going to move to the, to the uh, recommendations. You'll find here that we have developed some recommendations in the light of the findings and discussion uh, of the study. It's recommended to teach translation strategies comprehensively in translation courses and to pay more attention to students' perceptions of the power of culture in transferring meaning from the source language to the target language. So yes, we know that our uh, our courses they are uh, mainly practical courses, خاصة في في البكالوريوس. ولكن if there if there could be a kind of um, integration of trans uh, yes in translation one we start with uh, um, uh, uh, giving uh, a kind of introduction to the uh, translation um, uh, strategies, but also if it could be highlighted every now and then, يعني, um, إذا كل يعني هذه هذه لنا نحن يعني أنا ك كمحاضر أعمل في مجال الترجمة المفترض to highlight that the translation strategy that could be used to the students every now and then before maybe each and every assignment or project to remind them of what strategies that they can employ in the process of their translations. Uh, just like what Ms. Sophia just has highlighted now uh, with regard to the translation of the cultural uh, uh, specific uh, terms, this could be highlighted from the very beginning. It could, it could help our students, especially if it's not an assessment. يعني إذا ما كان تقييم يعني followed by uh, marks, يعني نقدر, we can do this. Number two, students should be aware of dictionary skills and searching strategies. Uh, that they could use with uh, while using their dictionaries. And that's why we usually ask our students to bring their uh, dictionaries to the classroom so that we can um, uh, improve the, this uh, skill uh, and inside the classroom. Number three, sh students should be encouraged to use collocations, idiomatic expressions, and word chunks in order to enhance their translation uh, competence uh, or the, the quality of the product itself, the translation, so that if they are going to be um, 
more encouraged to use collocations and to, to get to know how to employ idiomatic expressions uh, and to find how they can uh, use um, um, idiomatic expressions in the target language that could give the meaning without uh, uh, using word, for example, literal translation. This is going to be very uh, helpful, uh, especially with, with uh, uh, cultural um, uh, concepts or specific uh, expressions. If you go to number four, you'll find that more time should be allocated to translation classes and more challenging topics should be incorporated. And actually, that was that study, it was um, published in 2020, and at that time, uh, the plan of the courses of translation uh, at, that, at that time can الوقت المحدد لدراسة مقررات الترجمة فقط ساعتين أسبوعيا وهذا كان بيخلينا يعني كان بيجعلنا نعاني ك يعني محاضرين في 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 أو يعني instructors or يعني working with our students in the translation classes لأن ما كان بي for the proper practice that we wanted to um, uh, to have with our students. لكن الحمد لله الآن يعني يعني خلينا نقول خلينا يعني to assume نفترض إن إن تم تطوير الخطة يعني طبعا لكثير من ال الدراسات وال recommendations وهكذا يعني. استجابة لمثل هذه الدراسات. نمبر uh, 5 the idea of having a group discussion and that was effectively employed with our students. Group discussion should take place in the classroom. Uh, group work can increase motivation and reduce the uh, affective filters that of anxiety, stress and uh, low self-esteem as um, indicated by Ms. Safiya when her students uh, said that they were uh, they, they produced uh, or their productions or their translations were not that good because of the uh, an anxiety that they uh, experienced during the time uh, of the exam. If you go to number six here, you'll find that we can employ uh, the flipped classroom techniques effectively in our translation courses, and this could be used to improve um, our students' translation competence in the form of um, uh, providing our students with uh, the text for translation beforehand or before the class, and then during the class time, we are going to have a discussion of what they have translated, so that not to uh, to translate inside the classroom, but to give them the chance to have a discussion on their translations and to uh, to have an overview of how their peers or their colleagues have translated the same text inside the classroom. This is going to be a very effective um, technique if we are going to employ it effectively with our uh, students. And this is going to go. This is going to take us to number seven. Here we can have we can employ uh, the peer review technique. Um, that could be one of the significant techniques that can boost linguistic and cultural competence and consequently translation competence. And that was asserted in a study by Wang and Han 2013 that peer review helps students overcome different translation problems. And actually, I experience that myself with my students um, when I ask them to uh, to provide to for example just like what Mr. Fayyad just has discussed now excellent and ranging from acceptable to to excellent translation uh, they're in the classroom and to في نفس الوقت إذا تم عرض هذه الترجمات وفي نفس الوقت عرض الترجمات ال يعني الأقل جودة هذا بيكون very يعني helpful for the students to guide them through so because it's not going to be a kind of instruction from the teacher but it's going to be a kind of collaboration with their colleagues يعني ما هيكون فيها أي يعني تحسس أو يعني kind of anxiety or ما هيكون في أي مشاعر سلبية لدى الطلاب 
ولكن قد يكون more effective in guiding them through providing quality translation. Now we will move to number eight. And here we have uh, the content, knowledge contents, and monitoring contents. These should be highlighted for translation students. This could be also, and actually we, we have this uh, in our uh, study uh, course specification uh, and study plans. Uh, it's highlighted from the very beginning, the knowledge, the skills, and the values, but also it should be um, يعني المفترض ان المحاضر او يعني ان احنا نقوم بعرض هذه النقاط على الطالبات من بدايه الترم the content uh, knowledge contents and the monitoring contents as well number nine here we have another um, uh, item relevant to the recommendations that we are proposing here. Teachers need to give comprehensive task-based oriented feedback to students in time. Feedback is very important and that was highlighted effectively now with, um, by Ms. Safiya when she said that when students receive feedback, their um, uh, production or their uh, the uh, uh, she 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 found that there there is a kind of uh, progress in the following assessment, so that feedback is very important. They should, in addition, encourage the students to employ strategies, selection exercises, uh, comprehensive evaluation of the project target text, and reflection on the word uh, charts. And this all should be done in that session where students are given feedback. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, here we came to the end of our uh, presentation. And uh, now it's time to, uh, to conclude our session. Uh, I'm going to ask Ms. Sophia to, uh, but before the, before, uh, yeah, before we officially, before we close the webinar, we have an exciting uh, announcement to make here. Now it's time to uh, select the winner of the of the voucher. We are going to use um, a number packer wheel. So that I'm going to ask Ms. Sophia to uh, to provide us with the with the names. Okay. Yeah, please write your names there in the. Yeah, so the names are written now in the in the sheet. You have, I guess you have the sheet, right? Yeah, some of them still writing. Could we just give them two okay. minutes to finalize their registration? Okay, so that, can we ask them to uh, to raise any, uh, if they have any questions or anything that they would like to share with us uh, till they finish their... Uh, Okay. So we get the sheet ready. So uh, two minutes to finalize the registration, please. And please try not to amend others' information. Okay, and check all of you that your information is uh, well written and shown before. I'm, ha I'm, I'm uh, grateful for the chat. Yeah. Now we, have, we, can, we can have their feedback. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just speaking blindly. Okay. Okay, so two minutes to add your names, our dear participants. We have like 45 attendees. Uh, Okay, so that till we get their feedback, their uh, names, uh, in order to uh, to find who is the winner, I'd like to thank all everyone, uh, uh, everyone who's here, who's uh, joining this uh, webinar today. Uh, I'm I'm, jo I'm just uh, I feel very grateful for everyone who uh, took from uh, took of his or her time to uh, uh, to follow us today. I'd thank like you. to thank you. Dr. Uh, I'd like to thank all of our students. Thank you so much. And I'd like to thank Dr. Uh, 
Dr. Selma Gahtani. She was here, I think. I'm not sure if she's still here. Yeah. Dr. Selma Gahtani, our vice dean. Uh, Dr. Khairi Al Gahtani, Dr. Hana Al Hadithi, Dr. Uh, Majda, so Dr. Dina. And everyone there in the female section. In the male section, yeah. I'd like to to thank Dr. Raisa Asiri, the head of the uh, translation department, for organizing everything and making everything uh, um, great. So uh, now we are celebrating. And... Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Now we are celebrating. Now we are we are uh, officially celebrating the translation day, day and night, actually, day and night. In the yeah, morning, yeah. we had a session, a session by you. our colleagues. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In the morning, we had a session by Miss uh, Summer and Nimr, and today, and now uh, we have uh, the session tomorrow. Inshallah, we will have one more session at twelve uh, in campus. So thank you so much, Doctor uh, Doctor Aisa Asiri, for organizing the, these events and making it happen. Thank you so much. Yeah. Also, I would like to thank Doctor Abdul who was here. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. I can help you with the names. Yeah, yeah, please do. Go ahead. Yes, every single attendee. I'd like to it's thank the uh, MA students. Yeah. I'd like to thank my MA students, students, although they although they had a long lecture today, but still they are joining we'll us again. now. It's nice. <laughs> thank you so much. Yes, really okay, now it's uh, we we can have a quick discussion, or if we can receive any questions, if you have any questions, still we yes. get the the names and they are ready. If you have any questions, if you would like to raise any um, any point or any uh, any you can just write in the chat. Yeah. Yes, and we encourage our students to um, to, to um, uh, attend these uh, webinars that is posted on the FLT um, channel on the YouTube. We can find very important and uh, let's say useful uh, type of resources and webinars. So you can go there and uh, find other lectures for those who are interested. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was our paper. It was published in 2020, May uh, 2020. Okay. Shall we start with the real doctor? Yeah, sure. Okay. You have so uh, to please send me the, the sheet. Yeah. Yeah, we you send the sheet. It's okay. Yeah. Okay, so we can just convert it into Excel. Okay, he received. Okay, um, the email need to check. Okay, please don't leave. Still, we have a very exciting part here, which is um, the packer Yeah. Okay, you sent me the file, right? Sophia.
Okay, can you just open the wheel and then I can check the name with the number you've got. Okay, yeah, great. What do you think about it? Yeah, yeah sure. the old fashioned way. Yes, we have numbers from 1 to 44. 1 to 44. عندي من واحد إلى ثلاثة وأربعين مسجلة على الإكسل من واحد إلى ثلاثة وأربعين إلى ثلاثة وأربعين مسجلة على الإكسل من واحد إلى ثلاثة وأربعين في خانات فاضية بس في كم ملجأ Yes, that's the doctor. So number eight. Yeah. Yes. Eight is for I guess she's a colleague. So Miss Asma Hassan Ahmed Al Bin Hassan is our first winner of Al Uthain Voter okay, great. out of hundred real. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations. Okay, let's go to the second uh, winner here. Number 30. Right. So 30 for Hajar Ali Asiri. One of our yeah, students. Hajar Ali Asiri, congratulations. Uh, one of our students. Right. Okay, number three. Hajar Ali Number 17. So 17 for uh, Shahad Muhammad Shaban. Shahad Muhammad Shaban. Congratulations. A voucher for uh, Arif Lil Abur. 
yeah and one more for uh a relief number four one more right the last one here Thank you. 